सारेगामा कारवा 2.0 पॉइंट ओ ट्रिविया डिराइव फ्रॉम द लैटिन वर्ड ट्रिवियम द प्लेस वेर थ्री रोड मीट द वर्ड विच टूडे रिफर्स टू द अन इम्पोर्टेंट मैटर्स वॉज देन यूज फॉर एनी पब्लिक स्पेस द बिगिनर्स कोर्स एट द यूनिवर्सिटी वॉज कॉल्ड ट्रिवियम विच लेट टू द वर्ड बींग यूज फॉर एनी थिंग सिंपल और प्लेन वैक्सीन Vaccines have saved more lives than you can ever imagine. But the origin of the word vaccine may make you want to throw up. The word vaccine comes from the Latin word for cow or vacca because the guy that came up with the concept of vaccines, Edward Jenner, used the pus in the blisters of cowpox on a boy to vaccinate him against regular pox. Eeks. Vodka Vodka is an alcoholic drink from Russia and vauda means little water in Russian. War. War comes from the old English word war which literally means armed conflict. Etymologists believed that war was derived from a combination of the Proto-Germanic vero which means to confuse or mix up. and the ancient sanskrit var which means to attack whiskey oh whiskey on the rocks my perfect perfect nightcap all of us know what it is most of us have tried it few of us including me really savor and enjoy it but none of us know where the word whiskey actually comes from it's an anglicization of the gaelic term ishkbaha which literally translates to water of life isn't that interesting you the word you has so many originations for example the old english eu this is cognate with the old frisian ju or the old saxon eu now the pronunciation of you and ye gradually merged from the 14th century and the distinction between them faded out of general usage by 1600 aardvark and aardwolf now both these animals dig in the earth for termites and ants as their main source of nutrition the former somewhat resembles a pig and the latter looks a little like a striped wolf thus the boers in south africa named them respectively the aardvark from the dutch aard which means earth plus vark which means pig or the earth pig and aardwolf or the earth wolf abominable when something is said to be abominable it means that it is terrible or despicable and is a cause for moral revulsion the word is a combination of the terms ab which means away from and the latin homina which means human being thus meaning inhuman or beastly abundance allow me to make this word's origin abundantly clear to you this one dates all the way back to the 14th century and has its roots in latin the word abundance comes from the latin word abundare which means to overflow or be plentiful and that's where it got its meaning from accolade an accolade is an english word for an award or privilege granted as a special honor in medieval times men were knighted in a ceremony called the accolata which comes from the latin ac which means at and colum which is neck named for the hug around the neck received during the infamous knighting ritual which also included a kiss and a tap of a sword on the shoulder agnestis now anyone with short hands can relate to this one if you've ever had an itch on your back that you just cannot reach raise those tiny arms of yours in the air fun fact the part of your back that you can't reach is called the agnestis acorn Acorn is an ancient word that is derived from the old English acorn which means fruit or berry. The present form acorn gets its etymology from the 14th century where people believed that acorns were made up of oak 
and corn. They combine the two words together to form the word acorn. Acrobat Have you ever been to the circus and wished that you could be nearly as nimble as one of the acrobats? The word acrobat comes from the Greek words akros, meaning aloft, and bathos, which means climbing or walking, which literally translates to walking in the air. Pronym This word is younger than any other word that we've discussed before. It was coined in 1947. An acronym is a word formed by taking every first letter from a series of words. The most popular example of this is probably ASAP, which stands for as soon as possible. The word acronym comes from the combination of the Greek words akros, meaning top, and onym, meaning name. It was popularized after the First World War when the acronym AWOL or AWOL means absent without leave was being used a lot. Addict Nowadays, everyone seems to be addicted to social media. Originating in the 1530s, this was an adjective and not a noun, which came from the Latin word addictus, which is the past participle of addicier, which means to deliver or give one's assent to. Admiral The origin of the word admiral is pretty admirable and goes back all the way to the 5th century AD when Prophet Muhammad was still the Caliph. Abu Bakr was his commander-in-chief and was called Amir ul Muninin, which meant commander of the faithful. The title Amir or commander became popular soon after and naval chiefs were designated Amir al ma or Commander of Commanders. Western seamen who came in contact with the Arabs assumed that the Amir al was one word and believed this was a distinguished title. By the early 13th century, officers were calling themselves Amir al, which merely means Commander of. The D was probably added to the word through a common mispronunciation and that's how Admiral got its meaning. Afterwards Stop! You can listen to your music afterwards. Right now, you need to learn the origin of the word afterward. This one has a very nautical etymology. The Saxons called the stern of a boat the aft and the word ward meant in the direction of. Thus, aftward meant towards the rear of a ship or behind. Over the years, the word aftward changed in spelling to afterward and came to mean behind in time, later on or just later. That's where afterward got its meaning from. Alarm The etymology of the word alarm can be pretty alarming. The origin of this word can be credited to multiple countries that were at war with each other. When an enemy was spotted by a sentry, the old French military would shout, O arms! O arms! Which in English literally translates to, Add arms! Add arms! Telling their soldiers to man their battle stations. Though these were all signals indicating danger, it was strangely enough the Italian expression, Al arm! meaning the same thing that passed into English as alarm and became the English word alarm. Aloof Aloof is a term that is used when someone is being distant or detached. Surprisingly though, this word has its origin very closely related to the sea. Let's start by telling you a little bit about how sailboats work. A ship cannot sail upwind or windward until they keep the bow of the ship pointed slightly away from the wind. Knowing this in the 1400s, the Dutch came up with the term a loaf, which literally means away from windward. This later evolved into the word aloof and took on the general meaning of away from. Alphabet Even though we use the alphabet every day when we speak, we have no idea where the word alphabet came from. 
its origin has been hiding under our noses the entire time. It comes from the Greek word alphabetum, which is a combination of the first two letters of the Greek alphabet, alpha and beta. Isn't that interesting? Ampersand. What many people don't know is that the English alphabet had 29 letters, out of which one of them was the ampersand symbol. The word ampersand is actually a contraction of the phrase and per se and, meaning and by itself means and. Apology The word apology comes from the Greek word apoloia, meaning speaking in defence. So, to apologize was originally to defend one's words or actions, not to express regret for them. It did not acquire the modern meaning until the 18th century. Apostrophe The apostrophe is used in place of an omitted letter in connected words. For example, your, their, or don't. In fact, that's how the word apostrophe originated. In ancient Greek, the word apostrophos means to turn away. So, a letter in a word that has been turned away or omitted gets replaced by an apostrophe. Arena This one can be credited to the Roman gladiators. The word arena comes from the Latin word harina, which means sand. In ancient Rome, the stadiums in which games took place were filled with sand. So the sand itself, the harina, became associated with the place where the gladiators would fight with each other. Asterix Everyone knows what the asterix symbol is, but not many of us know where it got its name from. That tiny star-shaped symbol that we all use on a daily basis has its origins in the ancient Greece. It comes from the Greek word Asteriskos, which literally translates to little star. Asylum Now this isn't as crazy as I'd expect it to be. No pun intended. The word asylum comes from the Greek word asylon, which means refuge or a sanctuary for debtors or criminals. Atom You should never trust an atom. They make up everything. And I mean everything. Hey, even though I'm full of atoms, you can trust me on this one. The atom takes its name from the Greek word atomos, which means undivided or indivisible. Being to the Greek something that could not be cut up or divided any further. Average The origin of the word average is anything but average. The word derives from the French word avari, which is a word of Arabic origin that meant less than total damage to a ship or its cargo. During the 16th century, since average damage was a mean between the extremes of total damage and no damage, the word average ultimately came to take on its current meaning. Avocado This one's pretty strange and it might just put you off avocados for a while. It dates all the way back to 500 BC. The origin of the word avocado comes from the ancient Aztec language of Nahuatl. Avocado is a derivation of the word Ahuacatl. Believe it or not, but it literally translates to testicle. It probably had something to do with the shape of the fruit. Bamboozle Have you ever been made a fool of or been perplexed to the point of utter confusion? Well, then you know what it's like to be bamboozled. The word bamboozle is derived from a French word, amba. Berserk The origin of this word can be credited to the Vikings. The word berserk comes from the word berserker. They were Norse warriors who wore armour that was made out of bear skin. Berserker can be split into bear and sekre, which means bear and shirt respectively. The berserkers were known to fight their battles with a passion that borderlined on madness, hence giving berserk 
the meaning it has today bootlegging this one comes straight out of the pirates of the caribbean bootlegging is the illegal distribution sale and manufacturing of goods especially alcohol or music records the term bootlegging comes from the practice of the 19th century where pirates and alcohol smugglers hid bottles in their boots and smuggled them into different countries for illegal sale booze booze as in alcohol derives from the 14th century it comes from the old dutch word boozen which means to drink excessively so be careful next time buck got to bucks back in the days our ancestors used to barter goods and from that the word buck was used as an abbreviation of buck skin which was a unit of trade among the native americans and europeans the word has been used as slang for the dollar and other currencies since bully bully comes from the dutch word bol which means lover or brother and was originally a term of endearment for either gender later it became a familiar word for a male friend in the 17th century the word acquired a negative sense and would refer to someone who is cruel or a harasser of the weak and it is in this context that the word is used today bumf bumf meaning useless or tedious printed material is a late 19th century slang for bum fodder this basically means material whose only possible use was to be torn up hung up on a nail and be used as toilet paper the full term was first recorded in britain in 1650 cappuccino I don't know about you but I can't get any work done without my cup of cappuccino in the morning As much as we enjoy drinking it none of us really know where the word cappuccino comes from It's the diminutive form of the Italian word cappuccio which means hood Now you're probably wondering what the connection is between a hood and a cappuccino Well You shouldn't look further than the capuchin monks whose hoods were the same color as that of a good old cappuccino. And etymologists believe that's where it got its name. Casino. Casino was derived in the mid 18th century from the Italian and Latin words casa meaning house in Italian and cottage or hut in Latin. It didn't come to mean gambling house until the mid 19th century. Cereal. Who doesn't love a bowl of corn flakes with cold milk in the morning? Cereal, the healthy snack made from edible grains, has its origin deeply rooted in Roman mythology. The word cereal comes from the name of the Roman goddess of agriculture, Cira. Who would have known something so simple could come from something that sounds so mighty? Chicago. Chicago is a city in the United States of America that probably has the weirdest origin ever. The word Chicago is derived from a Native American word Chicago, which literally translates to, can you believe it, stinky onion. It was given this name due to the garlic onion like plant that used to grow alongside the Chicago River. Cloud. Cloud comes from clod, an old English word for rock, and is related to clod, which appears to be from an ancient Germanic root meaning lump. In Middle English, sky also meant cloud. Clue. The origination of this word accounts for a story about Theseus, the mythical king and founder of Athens, who famously made it back out of a deadly labyrinth by unspooling a ball of yarn so he could retrace his steps. In Middle English, such rolled up yarn was called a clue. Eventually, clue took on the metaphorical meaning of something that will lead you to a solution. Pretty soon, the spelling was changed to clue. Cobalt. Cobalt originated from the German kobold, meaning goblin. 
It was the Swedish chemist George Brandt who discovered cobalt as a chemical element and who referred to the metal as Regulus Cobalti. Compendious A term that is generally used when talking about a study or an essay. Compendious means something that is short and to the point or brief and concise. The word originates from its similar sounding Latin counterpart, compendiosis, which means advantages or brief. Cornucopia Cornucopia has its origins in Greek mythology. It comes from two Latin words, cornu or horn and copia or plenty. According to the legend, the infant god Zeus gave a goat's horn to a nymph as a gift. This horn would miraculously be replenished with all the fruits the nymph desired. Therefore, a cornucopia is a horn of plenty or never-ending supply. Denim This sturdy fabric's name was derived in 1690s from the French Serge de Nîmes meaning Serge from Nîmes, a town in southern France. The demand and popularity for denim first surged in 1873 when Jacob Davis, a tailor from Nevada, manufactured the first pair of denim pants of which he went on to sell 200 pairs. Disaster Have you ever cursed your stars when something unfortunate happens to you? I'm sure you have. Well, I know for a fact that during the mid-16th century, the Italians used to blame the stars when something unpleasant or negative used to happen to them. In fact, that's how the word disaster originated. The Italian words dis and astro came together to form the word disastro, which means an ill-starred event. Dumbbells this word originated in the early 18th century and denoted a rope with weights on, rather than bars, which were similar to the ropes used to ring church bells, hence dumb or silent bells. Dunce This word originated in the 1570s from earlier Dunce disciple or Dunceman, which means follower of John Dunce Scotus. Now, he was a Scottish scholar of philosophy and theology. His followers, however, opposed the philosophers of the Renaissance. And thus, dunce was first used to describe someone rejecting new knowledge. Eavesdropping Before the invention of guttering roofs were made, eaves were constructed on the sides of buildings. These were wide overhangs purposely built so that rainwater would fall away from the house and stop the walls and foundations from being damaged. This area was known as the eavesdrop. The large overhang gave good cover for those who wished to lurk in the shadows and listen to others' conversations. Epiphany An epiphany is a sudden insight into reality or a sudden realization of truth. It can also mean a sudden appearance. Its origin can be traced to the Greek word Epiphany, which means to appear or manifest. The word was first used in 1310 to describe the sudden appearance or manifestation of Jesus Christ in a text. The word then took on the modern meaning it has today because Jesus, according to the Christians, suddenly brought upon the truth to his people. The word then took on the modern meaning that it has today because Jesus, according to the Christians, suddenly brought upon the truth to his people. Epitome An epitome is a perfect example, personification, embodiment or incarnation of a particular quality or type. This word has its roots in the Greek word epithemni, which means a bridge. Etymology We've covered the etymology of a lot of words before this. But today, we shall talk about the etymology of the word etymology. Like most modern words, this one also has its origin in ancient Greek. It is a combination of two words, etymos, which means true meaning, 
and ology, which means study. Therefore, etymology literally translates to the study of true meaning. Explode. Now, this one is pretty interesting and has its roots in the 16th century. The word explode originally meant to jeer a performer off the stage. It comes from the Latin word explodier, which literally means to drive out by clapping. The word eventually started to take on the meaning of rejecting something scornfully with a loud noise and then eventually gained the meaning it has today. Mind-blowing! Fabulous Fabulous comes from the Latin word fabula, which means story. It's pretty evident how the word came to be used as it is today. Something amazing happens to someone. They tell their friends about it. They tell the story about that amazing thing that happened. People agree that that amazing thing was worth telling a story about. It's story worthy. It's fabulous. And that's how fabulous got its meaning. Freelancer Freelancer originally referred to mercenary knights or freelancers who would fight for any side willing to pay them. Genuine Now the word genuine genuinely originated in the late 16th century from the Latin genuineness, meaning native or natural, and from genu or ni which is a reference to the Roman custom of a father acknowledging paternity of a newborn child by placing it on his knee. George I'm sure all of us have a friend or know somebody called George. George the name comes from the ancient Greek name Georgos, which means earth worker or tiller of the soil. The prefix geo is related to the earth and the suffix orgos means worker. And here I thought only Indian names had special meanings behind them. Gerrymandering Gerrymandering is the rigging of elections by changing the boundary lines to give one party an advantage to the distribution of voters. The rigging of elections is as old as democracy but the act only gained its name in the 19th century. The governor of Massachusetts in 1812 was Elbridge Gerry, representing the Democratic-Republican Party, in opposition to the Federalist Party. Seeking to gain the upper hand in the Senate race of that year, a bill was passed changing the districts by which the voters were grouped. This explains the Gerry portion of the word. But the word mander? The shapes of the districts after the passage of the bill was said to resemble a salamander or as someone suggested, a gerrymander. Nice! Groggy Ah, feeling groggy after last night's party, huh? Now, did you know that grog is a form of alcoholic drink made from equal parts of spirits and water? Admiral Edward Vernon, an officer in the British Royal Navy who served in the West Indies, was a national hero in England. Vernon was known as Old Grog for his habit of wearing grogram jackets and watering down of his cruise rum ration to make it less intoxicating. So Grog was the name contemptuously given to the weakened rum. Hazard Is the casino your favourite place? Hmm then this one's for you. The etymology of the word hazard lies with the Turkish word zar, which means dice. During the Crusades, it took on a negative connotation, as games with dice were associated with gambling and led to the formation of the Arabic word azhar, which means danger or risk. Think of this the next time you decide to go all in during your game of poker. Helicopter When you ask people to split the word helicopter up into two parts, their instinct is to say heli and copter. But actually, that's not the case. The word has Greek roots from the word helikos, which means spiral, and epter, which means wing. Brilliant! Hurricane 
This one can be credited to the ancient Mayans. Hurkan was the Mayan god of wind and storms. The modern English word hurricane gets its origin from him. Hysteria. Hysteria comes from the Greek word hysterikos, meaning of the womb or suffering in the womb. Hysteria was used precisely to diagnose neurosis of women which in turn were believed to be caused by the uterus. By the 19th century, hysteria referred almost exclusively to what we consider sexual dysfunction among women. Infant. Ah babies, as adorable as they are, their non-stop crying could probably drive you crazy. Just imagine if they had the ability to talk they'd probably never shut up. Funnily enough, that's where the word infant gets its origin. Infant is derived from the Latin word infans, meaning unable to speak or speechless. Jargon There are two types of people on this planet, mystifiers and demystifiers. Mystifiers are people who use unnecessarily long words just to impress when the same thing can be said in an easier, much more efficient way. Scientists, lawyers, government ministers and bureaucrats often hide behind unintelligible gibberish, which more often than not consists of made-up words which are as inconsequential as the tweeting of a bird. We say they speak jargon. Funnily enough, the word jargon comes from the French word jargon, which literally translates to the twittering or chattering of a bird. Jeans Most of us have worn jeans before. Not many of us still fit into them. But I'm sure all of us can appreciate where the word jeans originated from. The name jeans derived from the French bleu de gêne, which means blue of Genoa. Genoa was a famous Italian city for a fustian textile of medium quality used for work clothes. It was then popularized in the US by Jacob Davis and Levi Strauss in the 19th century. Jinx Whether we believe in it or not, I'm sure most of us know what a jinx is. A jinx, as in a curse of bad luck, comes from an old English name for a woodpecker-like bird called Jinx that's spelt as J-Y-N-X. In those days, these birds used to be used in spells of witchcraft to curse someone with bad luck or jinxing them. Jovial Jovial is an adjective used to describe someone who is very cheerful and friendly. The word jovial comes from the Roman god of the skies, Jove. In Roman mythology, he was said to have a very jocular and friendly personality. And that's where the word jovial gets its meaning from. Jumbo Jumbo was the name given to an African bull elephant that was born sometime during the 1860s. It was arguably the most famous animal around that time, mainly because of its gargantuan size. The word Jumbo started to take on the meaning of large a few years after the elephant's fame reached its peak. Ketchup Yummy! Ketchup on my fries! I can't resist it! But do you know how the word originated? The word originated in 1711 from southeastern China where catsup meant salmon brine to relate to the ingredients and the flavour of the condiments. Later, travelling English speakers learnt of this and began to use it in various forms to relate to other kinds of sauces and broadened its use. Lemnis Kate Not many people know this, but the infamous infinity sign resembling a horizontal 8 is called a Lemnis Kate. It comes from the Latin word Lemnis Catus which means decorated with ribbons. The shape of the infinity sign looks a lot like a ribbon and that's where it got its meaning from. Legendary The word legend originally meant that things were meant to be read. In the pre-medieval period, around the 16th century, 
reading and writing were extremely rare and so anything worthy of being written down was considered to be of great importance and thus legendary. Lemur Lemurs are a tiny little species of primates that are found only in the island of Madagascar. Now, as adorable and harmless as they themselves might be, the origin of their name might not be the same. Lemur in Latin literally translates to Ooh, spirit of the dead. This is because Lemurs are nocturnal and the first explorers to visit the island got spooked after seeing them only during the night. Funny, isn't it? Loophole The word loophole originated in medieval England. Openings and windows were made in the walls of towers of castles for the archers to fire from. The openings were vertical and resembled the oval shape of a loop. Hence, the name loophole. Our derivation of the word comes from this. The only openings in a seemingly impenetrable wall were these slits which a child or small adult child could squeeze through. Thus, a loophole is a small opening or a way to get out of a seemingly airtight law which only a few clever people can exploit. Lucid The word lucid generally means something that is clear or easy to understand or someone who possesses the ability to think clearly. However, in a literary sense, it could mean something that is bright or luminous. It originates from the Latin word lux, which means light. Lukewarm Now this isn't really an etymology per se. But in Middle English, the word luke already meant warm or tepid. Sometime during the 14th century, people started using the term lukewarm to mean slightly warm or even to describe the works of entertainment as boring or mildly entertaining. If you had to truly dissect the word lukewarm today, it would just be warm warm. <laughs> Talk about redundancy. Lunatic Have you ever looked at the moon and felt a little crazy? No? <laughs> well, that's a good sign. It probably means you're okay. The word lunatic is derived from the Latin word luna, meaning moon. It originated from the belief that insanity is caused by the changes in the moon. A magpie is a bird that looks very similar to a woodpecker. During the 16th century, the bird used to be called the maggoty pie, which can be attributed to the fact that they used to wait behind bakeries and feed on the maggots that were found in stale apple and blueberry pies. The name maggoty pie was later shortened to magpie. Malaria We all know that malaria is the life-threatening disease that's typically transmitted through the bite of the female Anopheles mosquito. But not many of us know how the word malaria came to be. Now, it's strange how a word typically associated with Africa has its roots in medieval Rome. Back in the 18th century, the people who used to live closer to the marshy swamps surrounding Rome started getting gravely sick. The Romans at that time attributed the terrible atmosphere of the marshes to their sickness, thus giving rise to the Italian term malaria, where mal means bad and area means air. And so we have malaria. Mesmerize The word mesmerize comes from a person, Friedrich Anton Mesmer. During the 18th century, Mr. Mesmer claimed that there existed a power which he called animal magnetism. The name mesmerism was given to this power. Over the years, the word mesmerize has acquired a broader meaning so that today, mesmerize means to fascinate or spellbind. Mocha We all know that a mocha is a type of fine coffee made from a selection of red and green coffee beans that's typically had with a dash of chocolate mixed in it. 
not many of us know that Mocha is named after the port also named Mocha in Yemen on the Red Sea. Moment Moment comes from Latin for movement or momentum and meant the smallest weight that would move the pointer on a scale. Later, it came to apply to a small amount of time as well and in the 13th century was defined as 1 40th of an hour. Muscle The origin of the word muscle is as strange as it is paradoxical. The word muscle comes from the Latin word musculus, which literally translates to little mouse. This analogy apparently came to be because of the shape and movements of certain muscles, notably biceps, which resembled mice. Surprisingly, Latin isn't the only language where this analogy is seen. In Arabic, Adala means muscle and Adal means field mouse. Isn't that interesting? Namby Pamby Namby Pamby is a term that's used to describe someone who is weak or ineffectual. The word Namby Pamby was originally an insult to the poetry of this guy called Ambrose Phillips, who at the time, according to critics, wrote insufferable garbage like timely blossom, infant fair and fondling of a happy pair. It is essentially just a babyfication of his first name and it's unfortunate for him and hilarious to us that this is the only way history remembers him. Nice The origin of the word nice might not be as nice as you think it might be. During the 13th century, Nessius was a term that people used to use for someone who was ignorant. Believe it or not, sometime during the 1800s, the word was being used in Old English as an insult to call someone stupid. It wasn't until 150 years later that the term started being used with the same positive meaning that it has today. This one's pretty oxymoronic to say the least. Nickname This one's really cool, but it might need a bit of a longer explanation. The word nickname during the Middle Ages used to be known as Ickname. Ek in German means corner. So an Ickname essentially was the name that you were called by around the corner or block. Eventually, people started adding the article and before the word and it evolved from an eek name to a nickname. Nightmare Well, most of us have had unpleasant dreams at some point or the other. This word originates from the Old English word mare or mare, a mythological demon or goblin who agonizes others with frightening dreams. And the word night was added to accentuate the dream aspect. Cool, isn't it? Noon The etymology of noon is from Old English non, which is 3 o'clock pm or the ninth hour. In current usage, the word refers to midday or 12 pm. OMG The acronym OMG or Oh My God is typically associated with millennials. When do you think this phrase originated? Early 2000s? The 90s? Wrong! Believe it or not, but the first usage of this phrase was in 1917 by a 75-year-old British Admiral, John Arbuthnot Fisher, who wrote in his 1917 diary, I hear that a new order of knighthood is on the tapia. OMG! Oh my God! Shower it on the Admiralty. Osculate this one is for the more mathematically inclined. So if you didn't know this one already, I don't blame you. Basically, when two curves or surfaces touch at just one point so that they share a tangent at the point of contact, they are osculating. The adorable part is that osculate comes from the Latin word osculum, which means kiss. Therefore, geometry Plus entomology equals romance. Wish I had that formula when I was younger. Ostracize. 
This word originated in the mid 17th century from the Greek word ostrakizain meaning shell or potsherd. In ancient Greece, a citizen whose influence was deliberated dangerous to the state was sent to exile and each person eligible to vote would write down the name of the candidate on a fragment of broken pottery or potsherd. The pieces were then counted and if the votes deemed it the person would be ostracized. Ostrich We all know that the biggest bird in the world is the ostrich. It comes from the old French word oustrouche. Quite cool, I think. Oxymoron An oxymoron is a figure of speech where two words are in contradiction to one another. The word oxymoron is a combination of the Greek words oxus and moros, which means sharp and dull respectively. Isn't it interesting that the word oxymoron is itself an oxymoron? Palace The grandeur of the ancient Romans isn't a secret. The word palace is derived from the Middle English palais, which comes from Latin palatium. This is in reference to the Palatine Hill, one of the seven hills of Rome where Roman aristocrats and later Roman emperors built splendid residences. Pamphlet Now this one's for all the romantics out there. Pamphlet comes from the Anglo-Latin poem Pamphilus Seu de Amor, which literally translates to Pamphilus or about love. This love poem was so popular during the Middle Ages that it was copied and distributed numerous times, giving the word pamphlet the meaning it has today. Pandemonium This word was coined in 1667 by John Milton in his poem Paradise Lost. He used the word to describe the high capital of Satan and all his peers. The word is a mixture of Greek pan, which means all, and Latin demonium, which means evil spirit, leading to pandemonium. Paradigm A paradigm is a typical example, pattern or an archetype of something. It comes from the amalgamation of the two Greek words para and daiknonai which means beside and to show respectively. These words come together to form the Greek word paradaiknunai, which means to show side by side. Parasite If you hate sharing food as much as I do, then this one might hit home for you. Parasite is a word that comes from the ancient Greeks and means to eat beside. It's referred to people who ate at someone else's table. Passion Now this one really shows you that there are always two sides of one coin. Passion is derived from the Latin word patior, which means to suffer or endure. So presumably, a passion is something that causes you to suffer or something that you suffer for. Makes you think twice about calling love your passion, doesn't it? Penguin This word for a seabird may have come from the Welsh pen, which means head, and gwyn, which means white, or from the Latin pinguis, which means fat. There are also references to Penguin Island, some of which predate use of the word as a noun, which suggests that the bird may have been named after the location. Peninsula a peninsula is a mass of land that is almost entirely but not completely surrounded by water. In fact, the word peninsula comes from the mid-16th century Greek word peninsula, which is a combination of the words pain and insula, which means almost and island respectively. So it literally translates to almost an island, philanthropist. This one will definitely make you smile. The word philanthropist is a combination of three words. The first part or the prefix of the word phil 
is a Greek word meaning love. The middle or the root, anthrop, which comes from the Greek word anthropos, meaning mankind. And the last part, the suffix ist, is Greek for the one who. So philanthropist is literally one who loves mankind. Nice. Porpoise. A porpoise is a fully aquatic marine animal that kind of looks like a dolphin with a big snout. Aptly so, that's where it gets its name from. The word porpoise is a combination of the Latin words porcus, which means pig, and Pisces, which means fish, which makes the literal translation of porpoise or pigfish. If only you could see one live, you'd see how uncanny the resemblance is. Quarantine Quarantine comes from the French word quarante, which means 40. Whenever a ship arriving in port was suspected of containing people or animals that were infected with the disease, it had to stay away from the shore for a period of about 40 days so as to not infect the uninfected. That's how the meaning of the word quarantine came to be. Quintessence Quintessence typically means the most perfect example of something. The word has its origins all the way back in the Middle Ages when people believed that the earth was made up of four elements. Earth, air, fire and water. They thought the stars and planets were perfect and superior to what we had on earth and made up of yet another element. People called this element by its medieval Latin name, Quintin Essentia, literally fifth essence. Robot The word robot comes from a play written by the Czechoslovakian playwright Karel Kapek. In this play, mechanical monsters called robota turn upon their masters. Robota is the Czech word for work. And any machine that does work is called a robot. Robot still means a mechanical monster, a machine with human properties. But today, in our age of automation, the word robot is often applied in reverse to people who behave like machines. Sabotage Sabotage comes from the French word sabotage which comes from saboteur, which means to literally walk noisily or clumsily with a sabot, which was a wooden shoe. In French and at first in English as well, it referred to labour disputes. Salad Salad first appeared in English in the 14th century and comes from the Latin salata, which means salty. During Roman times, vegetables were seasoned with brine or salty oil and vinegar dressings, which is why salt is associated with salad. Salmon If you're a fishing enthusiast, you probably already know this one. Salmon is derived from the 13th century Latin word salire, which means to jump, which is surprisingly not surprising at all, considering what good jumpers they are. They're probably better at staying out of the water than in it. Sarcasm Now imagine two friends talking to each other and one tells the other. Brains are not everything. In fact, in your case, they're nothing. Mean, isn't it? Now there's always that one person in a group who's always sarcastic about everything. If you've ever felt like you've been torn apart by sarcastic comments, then you've truly experienced the origin of the word sarcasm. Sarcasm originates from the Greek word sarkazin, which literally means to tear flesh. Pretty gross, huh? Second. Second, as in one sixtieth of a minute, comes from the medieval Latin secunda par minuta, or second diminished part. The R was initially divided into 60 parts once. Prima or prime minute and then divided again for the secunda par minuta or the second minute. These were then reduced to minute and second. Seminar Seminar comes from the Latin word seminarius, 
which means seed plot or nursery. This makes sense, given that a seminar is presumably where seeds of knowledge and wisdom are planted and nurtured. Think of this the next time you're in a seminar. Or better yet, focus on the seminar. Smart Alec Let me tell you a story about a man named Alec Hoag from New York City. He was a con man and a thief and a pretty smart one at that. During the 1840s, his wife would seduce men and bring them back to their apartment. While his wife and the man slept, Alec Hoag would loot their money and belongings. And that's where the term Smart Alec came from. Soccer Have you heard Ole Ole Ole? Now this one's for all of you footballers. The word soccer actually originated in the United Kingdom. The term association football was shortened to soccer derived from the middle of the word association. This turned into the word soccer and that is still used in the US, Canada and Australia. Supercilious Supercilious is a word that is used for someone who thinks that they are superior to others. This word originated around the 16th century and has its roots in Latin. Supercilious comes from the Latin word for eyebrow or supercilium, which supercilious people often raise. Superciliosis is Latin for haughty. Psychophant This word has a whole story to it. A psychophant today is someone who acts obsequiously towards someone else for their own gain. Back in the day, in ancient Greece, the word psychophant literally meant fig revealer. During the mid-16th century, exporting figs was a criminal offence and people who told on the smugglers were called sukofante, where suko means figs and fante stands for people who reveal something, thus giving those people the name psychophants. Torpedo A torpedo is an underwater explosive device, typically fired from a submarine or ship. This is used to blow up enemy ships and naval bases. In Latin, torpedo literally translates to stingray, which is a predator that uses an electric charge to stun its prey, much like a torpedo would today. Tory Tory comes from an Irish word for outlaw. The word is derived from the Middle Irish word tora, meaning outlaw, robber, or brigand. It began to be used as an offensive term for Irish Catholics dispossessed of their land in 1646. Tragedy This word is derived from the classical Greek word travoidos. The word literally translates to goat song and may be traced back to the time when the goat was either the prize in a competition of choral dancing or satiric drama. Translation This one goes all the way back to the 14th century. The word translation is a translation of the word translation, which means the removal of a saint's body or relics to a new place. The word later took on the meaning of transfer or carrying across and eventually got the meaning it has today of transferring meaning from one language to another. Treadmills Now you might like to run on that treadmill. But this gym equipment was once a punishment. The earliest usage of this word was in 1822 to denote an instrument of prison discipline. Victorian prisoners powered a huge mill which crushed grains or pumped water. <laughs> हंसते गाते सोचा था मैंने मन कई बार वो पहली नजर हल्का सा असर करता है क्यों इस दिल को दिल